This demo will be the chain dimension demo. Chain dimension is arrowhead to arrowhead or symbol to symbol. So under annotation, under the dimension feature, the next one down is the chain dimensions. Simply grab two parallel lines and it will create a chain dimension. If you continue on, and grab the parallel lines, it will be a chain dimension. So all chain dimensions should be, you, you should use the chain dimension where we have symbols, arrowhead to arrowhead. The reason being is one, I want you to be able to move one and they all move and they keep all the arrowheads aligned. Okay? That is a true chain dimension. If you do a dimension like this, and those are supposed to be lined up, and you misalign that, that's just called a mess. All right, so there's only two styles of dimensioning stack and chain dimension. Either it's arrowhead to arrowhead, or they're stacked one on top of each other at the proper spacing in reference to figure 9 1 in your print reading book. So, when you do the chain dimension, you notice that the gap is right on this side. And even when I slip it over here to this side, it'll be correct. If you use regular dimension, the gap is correct on this end, here, and here. But if I try and drag this dimension up here, it does not have the gaps over here where it's supposed to. So that would be an incorrect way. Again, if you're using the chain dimension, it's just going to automatically know to do that correctly. So chain dimension, again, arrowhead to arrowhead. Make sure that you see this arrow sticking out like that. We don't want that. We're going to hit that arrow. Click off your no man's land. All right, unless this spacing is less than a half inch the dimension should be on the inside. The bottom line is the dimension line should be visible. I should be able to grab a dimension line and move it. If this is text is so tight or this distance from here to here is so small and I can't see the dimension line and you can't see the dimension line to grab it, you need to pull it out, slide it down, and you must put a horizontal shoulder on it. As it stands right now, this is an ISO standard to leave this dimension like this. So now we're learning ISO and ANSI standards. This is an ISO standard. You click on this, right click, and go to Properties. Find uh, dimension, ex no, dimension line. Under dimension line where it says representation, we're not going to do a regular. You're going to do a two-part. Select apply. Select OK. And then drag, uh, grab. It can be a little tough. I'm going to have to zoom up on that and grab that horizontal line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get just that horizontal line so I can move it down. Aye, aye. I've never seen that do that before. It's fun. I'm trying to grab that horizontal line. It won't let me move it down for some reason. Anyways, that wouldn't be acceptable. I'm going to delete that and try and show you with the individual dimension how that should work. And you have to delete these one at a time. Okay. So a regular dimension. <clears throat> select this line.
click here. I'm going to drag the number out. Right click and go to properties. Use two part. I don't know why it shoves it up to the top. I have no idea why it does that or how to control that, but I'm going to need to slide that corner down there. And that's what that should look like. Okay. So again, that's ANSI standards, what you're seeing here. ANSI and ASME standards. <clears throat> Leaving your dimension like that is the ISO standard. Select this and hit delete. Again, chain dimension. If I grab the first one and the last one and use the same techniques I did on the stack dimension, that will be fine. Just make sure you're actually grabbing the lines. So one of the problems is sometimes that dimension's in the way when you use that same technique. But the bottom line is these are called symbols. When I go to properties, see it says symbols one, symbol two. When you use this type of dimension, it gives you two arrowheads. The two arrowheads are known as symbols. They call them symbols because some companies use other options. This would be if you want to do like a datum. Um, sometimes they have no ends or baseline dimensioning. So some of these symbols have different meanings. Typically, we leave it at filled arrow for most places. All right. So one last demo on the chain dimension. Simply grab your datum edge and then work your way out from line to line to line. What? Uh, that's weird. Whoops. I'm going to try that again under chain dimension. I'm going to grab these dement these lines here. Okay, I'm going to click that location. I'm going to go to view. Set my grid. The distance should be 3 eighths to a half inch off the part. So I'll go this would be a half inch. I'll come up a little bit higher. Okay, I could go like up to here. That would be a half inch. I wouldn't want to go too much more than that. I could come down here. That's This is a quarter inch. And there's a little bit more. So possibly three eighths, maybe a little less. It'll come up just a hair bit more. Now you can't do the same thing here because if I go a half inch, or if I go three eighths, I might be too tart too tight. See that decimal is too tight to the part. You really want that decimal at least three eighths of an inch away. So I can click over here. When I turn the grid off, these dimensions look fairly decent and that is your datum dimensioning. Don't forget to finish by highlighting the profile, right clicking on the pro, uh, constraint and go to properties and change your value tab to numdink. Hit OK. And you can save your model just like that. OK, that concludes this exercise on chain dimensioning.